What's up everybody? This is Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles and I just saw a post on Facebook of somebody asking what do I get if I breed a hypo to a hypo? We're talking about boa constrictors here. So I thought I'd do another video specific to boa constrictors themselves. I apologize I'm driving. I don't have any snakes around me but hopefully this is helpful to you guys. So when you take boas for example there's, there's mainly two different types of genetics you're dealing with. One's going to be a co-dominant and the other one is a recessive. I don't believe there's a dominant gene with boas. Maybe I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not up on all the latest boa morphs and stuff, but um, your, your co-dominant genes are going to be your motleys, your hypos, your fire. Um, I believe jungle is a co-dominant and there's a couple other ones out there that I'm sure I'm missing, but that basically means you have a visual animal but when you breed two of those visual animals together, you're gonna to get a super form of that. So you're gonna get a super hypo, a super motley. Uh, the, the, the super form of the fire would be the leucistic boa. So those are your super forms. Then you have a recessive genetic, which are things like your albino, um, your anatheristics. I can't think of anything else right now off the top of my head, but they have all kinds of, all kinds of recessive stuff that's um, arabesque, things like that. So when you put the two of those together, you need two visual animals to make more visual animals, but they won't make anything different from there. It'll just make more of the same animal that you're looking at. When you have the recessive and you breed that to a normal snake, so you have a visual animal and you breed it to a normal, it's gonna give you babies that are all normal looking, but they'll have the trait, they'll have they'll, what you would refer to as 100% het or 100% heterozygous for the super form of that animal, which is the albino. So that's almost the equivalent as a hypo or a motley, where it's in a co-dominant, there's a visual difference between the babies, but, or, I'm sorry, between a normal, but there's also a step up above it. So there's your normal, your hypo, and your super hypo. With albinos, it would basically be your normal, your head albino, and your albino, which is your visual or your super form of the genetics. So if you breed a hypo together with another hypo, you're gonna get 25% normals, 50% hypos, and 25% super hypos. That would be the same as breeding two 100% head babies together. You're gonna get 25% visual, 50% are gonna be 100% head for your albino, and then the 25% are gonna be uh, just normals. So, I apologize, I'm driving. Uh, so the other 25% are gonna be your normals. So what, because you can't distinguish between a normal and the, visu and the, the non-visual head, we call that a 66% hat. So 66% hats result from breeding two 100% hats together. And that would be the equivalent of breeding like two hypos together. But because you can't visually see this is a hypo, this is a super hypo, and this is a normal, you end up getting what we refer to as 66% hat. And that, that is basically, there's a 66% chance that you're going to hit and that baby is going to have the genetics to hold or to, that carries the albino gene or anatheristic or any other recessive gene that's out there. The same thing's going to apply if you breed a hypo to a normal. Hypo to a normal will give you 50% of the babies will be normal, 50% of the babies will be hypo. So if you think of that hypo as and, you're, and with that hypo, I'm sorry, I'm going to backtrack. With that hypo, you're going to get no super hypos. You need two hypos to make the super hypo. So if you think of that hypo as your 100% het animal, let's say you take a 100% het animal and you breed it to a normal, all of the babies are going to look normal, but 50% of those babies are going to be 100% het for your recessive gene, whether it's albino or anery or, or whatever it may be. So, but because you can't tell the difference, there's a 50% chance that if I took two babies, one of them is going to be, it's going to hold the genetics for that albino or that recessive gene. So hopefully I didn't just confuse the hell out of people even more, um, and this was somewhat helpful. I appreciate you guys following, comments, and subscribing. Leave me some feedback. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Uh, if you are confused, give me some questions. Give me some topics on how I can clarify this. Maybe I'll do a video with some animals to show you actual examples of what we're doing. And uh, that's it. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.